To be honest, I'm not entirely sure why so many people want to see this video, but every time I've ever made a cast iron video, I've had a whole slew of comments from people that's like, what happens if you use 6011 to weld cast iron? What happens if you use 6013 to weld cast iron? And do you really need to preheat? What happens if you don't do that or you don't bevel or anything? And uh, so I figured that since this bell housing, which is what I welded in my How to Weld Cast Iron mini series, and you know, since this is going to the scrapyard anyway, I figured before I got rid of it, I would um, come out here and turn it into something uh, more useless than it presently is. So, let's have a look at what we have to work with here. We have four grooves ground into our cast iron bell housing of some type. And uh, basically, this is what we're going to be working with. These are supposed to represent, of course, a piece of cast iron which is cracked and had been prepared for welding. And, you know, like... Um, like with painting, if you're going to paint something, the actual spraying the paint on is a very small part of the process. When you weld something, the actual welding is a very small part of the process. There's a lot of other things you're going to have to think about and work with. When you're welding cast iron, you have to plan out a post heat and a preheat. You have to do some filler metal selection and heat management while you're welding is also very important. But um, ain't nobody got time for that. We're just going to go, we're just going to weld it because what could possibly go wrong? That's why. First up, the 6013. Yeah, I guess there's not much to it but to do it. I'm going to go ahead and run this on electro negative on our Hobart stick mate. And uh, 120 amps, I don't know. Let's sit about there and it just is needed. are finished weld everybody. I'm gonna clean the slag but I'm gonna be careful not to do anything that could resemble peening. Oh wow that is ugly. So here's the results of our 6013 welding adventure. As you can see the initial weld itself wasn't all that attractive. We've got uh, plenty of porosity going on here. It looks kind of like the surface of the moon. There's that big old hole in it. And I uh, let it cool for about four minutes according to the timer on my camera. And in that time, I just, uh, at the end of that time rather, I just happened to glance down and see this nice big crack going right down the middle of it into that. That is probably one of the ugliest welds I think I've ever made, YouTube. All right, so 6013, not recommended for welding cast iron. In my opinion, not recommended for welding most things, but definitely not cast iron. All right, next up, how about some 611? Alright YouTube, so we got that nice crack there, which I pointed out, and the rest of this looks to be surprisingly intact, except if we move back up this way, you'll see another crack there, but um, yeah I think that's the one there, we got one that goes most of the way down that tow line if you look real close. But that didn't just epically fail or split wide open like I thought it was going to. You know, for reasons that I mentioned earlier, you know, 6010, 6011 being somewhat known for making what you could call brittle welds, I thought this was going to be a lot worse than it turned out to be. That's actually better than the 6013. All right, well, next up, let's do some 7018. I'm going to run this at the same amperage I ran the eighth inch 6010 at because, you know, these are 330 seconds. So, let's do it. Yeah. 
check it out YouTube. Here's our finished weld and all of its awesomeness. I told y'all that didn't run well at all. But if you look at the crater, you'll see that it's a little bit low, but it's free of cracks. Except for that in the middle of your screen. That might be a crack. I'm not entirely sure. But if you look down to where this first slag hole is, and then we zoom in, You can see a few slight cracks there, but that would appear to be it, unless there's a couple more there. I'm not sure if that's a crack or not. But either way, I'd say that went also surprisingly well. Okay, so we've now tried out three of our welding methods, and I guess it's just one more, the Nomacast. I'll just turn this up to, uh, I don't know, a little past 120. I've remembered that this welder does weld kind of cold. I don't know if that gauge is just off or what, but uh, all right, we're still on electrode positive. So let's do it. Alright YouTube, so I gave this plenty of time to cool, I actually went inside and uh, almost forgot to come back out and finish the video, but as you can see, we have some pretty horrendous cracking going on, I've never actually seen anything like that in all my years of cast iron welding experience, yeah my like one year, but um, yeah there's that, which you know, I've got a theory on this, which is that maybe this crack was made a hundred times worse or more by this weld going in and, and, you know, the heat pulling it. But I'm willing to bet there's a chance that this was already here because we're pretty close to where I welded this thing in the How to Weld Cast Iron series. And, um, you know, maybe when I was causing this crack with a sledgehammer, then I caused a little crack here that I either didn't see or maybe it's too small to see or whatever. But and then when I welded, it just got worse. But who knows? Anyway, we have that, and we also have some crater cracks here. There's three individual craters. There's this one, and that one, of course, and there's one that's kind of in between. These both overlap it on each side, so you can barely see it, but that's also cracked. Uh, however, the rest of the bead actually looks pretty half-decent. Now with this, you know, I kind of wanted to see what would happen if you welded on this bell housing without doing a bevel, so I didn't do a bevel, I just put a nice crack in with the, uh, you know, simula crack, simulated crack with the cutoff wheel, and just ran all the way up. And this is actually totally fine, I don't see a single crack on here. So that's, uh, that was a little bit surprising. But to be honest, I'd say everything we've done out here tonight is quite surprising. The 6013 was a complete and total failure. It ran like crap, it looks horrendous, and it cracked like no other. The Hobart Nomacast, I'll say that was kind of a wash. I think it's interesting that that's the only product we've used that's specifically designed for welding cast iron, and it's among the worst in the results we've had. Uh, this, is, this is pretty god awful. There's this abomination here, and then there's the crater cracking going on. This, like I said, was fine. 6011, minimal cracking. 7018, minimal cracking. But you know what? Do I... Am I going to be like, you know, preheating your metal is a total waste. You don't actually have to peen it. There's no reason to bother with a cool-down procedure whatsoever. No, because cast iron is still cast iron. And I know, I can already hear the comment, oh, it is cast steel. No, it isn't. I've spark tested this in two videos and drill tested it too. Definite cast iron. But, um, yeah, where was I going with that? Right, everything in this video so far has been kind of a surprise. Um, and, you know, this was really fun to do, but if you have something cast iron to repair, I highly recommend repairing it properly the first time because if you don't, you know, if you try to weld it with the 6013 like I did and you have a result like this, you know, like I did, then not only would I still have to fix this, I'd have to put in a much bigger weld, I'd have to cut out a much wider bevel and then weld it up again and, you know, it's... Now, you don't really save anything by trying to do it this way first. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is just because the surface of these welds looks 
in some cases tolerable, that doesn't mean that what's underneath the surface is totally a-okay. -A I mean, there could be plenty of subsurface cracking going on, or especially with the 6011 weld, even though it looks okay now, I bet that'd be insanely brittle, and, um, you know, it probably wouldn't hold up to all that much, but you could say the same for pretty much everything here. Um, yeah, so, I don't really know what to make of this. It was fun to do, and I know a lot of people requested this video, so uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more.